beginning of the second quarter today. Bits of a volatile first quarter for equities, and they gained just 1.1% year to date. Bonds are negative year to date. You'd have earned more with cash over the past quarter. Second quarter looking a bit better, do you think? Well, we, I think we're a little bit high uh, ending this quarter. I would have preferred us uh, to, uh, to, to uh, stay uh, at the bottom of the low of, uh, the, of this uh, first quarter and to move from there. But there are still pretty, um, uh, pretty attractive uh, uh, dividend yields out there, forward v dividend yields that I like. Uh, so I wouldn't say that the market is necessarily negative. But on the other hand, uh, while we're talking strategy, my strategy is definitely not to look on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis at the market. I rather look at dividends, and uh, and if I must put it in sort of a, uh, you know, in a, in a matchbox, that is my strategy, and that is following dividends at this stage. Well, we have been through the reporting season here in South Africa as well, so all of those January to December years. What are you seeing on the dividend front? Are companies increasing their dividends in line with profit growth? Are you seeing a healthy return there? Yes, I definitely think so. And, uh, you know, I just look at, um, at the daily reports out of uh, uh, on, uh, just on dividend growth. And, and where you used to have in the past funnies, you know, funny little companies that you either can't pronounce the name or never have heard of before, you get actually uh, strong blue chip shares in, in that and you can easily put together. A, a good uh, dividend growth, uh, a dividend portfolio that uh, will give you an above average of 5% uh, return. Well, before we begin talking about strategy, how about the principle of reaching a strategy? So maybe go back a step before that. Uh, how, how do you get to that principle of reaching a strategy? Yeah, that, that is a very good question because I always believe that you must, before you start to look at your strategy, um, or before you start to look at anything, you must go and look at what is your fu your foundation. Where are you going to start? And uh, when you when you uh, when you choose a strategy, and I don't say you should use this strategy or that st strategy. There are many extremely good strategies, but when you decide on a strategy, you should stick to, to a strategy, and be consistent with your strategy. Don't jump around between strategies, and definitely not on the short term, and definitely not if you are. And yeah, I'm more talking to the man in the street investor. Uh, don't, uh, if, you, if you do not have the time and you do not have the expertise and you definitely do not have the data on your fingertips, don't jump between strategies. You can get fund managers that might move from one strategy to another strategy in terms of what the market is doing, but they will also not do that uh, on short-term basis. So choose your strategy and stick to your strategy. And I always say, even if you decide that you are going to follow the stars uh, in the way that you're going to pick your, 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 uh, your shares, if you stick to that strategy and you're consistent with that strategy over the long term, you most probably will be successful. Well, what's your strategy at the moment, just given where the markets come from and where you think it's going? Because there are still a lot of unknowns out there. We could have the ECB raising interest rates next week. We could have the end of quantitative easing in June. And that surely must be a risk. Uh, Nuriel Rubini saying today that he would expect a pullback in the equity markets if we do have the end of quantitative easing at the end of June. What's your strategy at the moment? Definitely not looking at the stars. <laughs> But uh, my strategy, as I said earlier, is, is looking at, at uh, dividend yields and forward dividend deals. You know, it doesn't uh, um, work if you go and work on a once-off historical dividend yield and, uh, and next, year, next year or next uh, season it, it surprises you on the downward side. I look at, at the strategy uh, of, of dividends, high dividends, and, and a good dividend yield strategy. And when we talk about high dividends, not necessarily uh, the sort of cover that you don't get any, uh, any of the profit being plowed back into the company because that is also necessary because in the end you want to have good capital growth in your company and that is where it comes from. It, it, it eventually comes from, from the, uh, uh, the uh, profits uh, that hasn't been, uh, uh, that hasn't been uh, paid out as a, as a dividend. We're not just looking at local companies here, are you also looking at offshore companies who also pay good dividends? Um, not necessarily at this stage. At this stage, I'm actually talking more about the South African market. Um, but yes, it will work on the on the offshore market. I just can't give you now offhand uh, my my choices of of shares in uh, you know offshore that I will choose. 
uh, on that basis. But yes, it is a strategy and anybody can actually use that strategy. That is a nice thing about it. it it's not a very difficult uh, thing to, uh, to uh, put together. And again, when we talk to the man in the street, that is a sort of thing that someone uh, anybody can do and it is not something that you need to follow day by day to be right. Are you looking here at the top 40 shares at the, at the blue, big blue chips on the stock exchange? Well it is always sort of the core of my portfolio um, and, and I, will, I will break away a little bit by bringing in for instance companies like Bulletin and, uh, and Anglo-American into my portfolio so it, it will, won't mean that my portfolio will have a, a dividend bias but it won't mean that I will be 100% only in high yielding uh, stocks. But I w for that reason, I will, for instance, not go for a, a company like Maspers. How about for the smaller investor and for the unsophisticated investor, Satrix Divi, would that be an option? Definitely, Stephen. For the man that can only afford 300 rand a month or 1,000 rand a month, I will definitely uh, uh, recommend to go for the uh, Satrix Divi. Actually, that is what I do uh, whenever I... Uh, advise people if they ask me about that. Uh, the Satrix Divi is a good, good way of, of going for it but because someone else is making the choices for you in the top 30, 30 uh, stocks on the, on the JSE uh, in terms of dividends. Outside of the equity space, what are you looking at at the moment? Bonds haven't returned anything. In fact, they're negative year to date. Inflation linked bonds doing okay. And we, we are in an, a changing inflationary environment at the moment. Would you, in a portfolio, be looking at cash? Would you be looking at inflation linked bonds as well? Definitely not cash. Um, I mean, cash is at its most expensive that it has been in ages. And, and if you look at a graph of, uh, of returns be between asset classes, equity stands out uh, very, very, very strongly there. So at this stage, as, uh, as I, am, I am an asset allocator, but at this stage it is very, very biased towards equities. Um, property is expensive, uh, uh, listed property and, um, and, and, and bonds is also not where it should be yet. Uh, I think we must, start, we must wait, maybe not on the bond side, but definitely on the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the cash side, we'll definitely have to wait till we start to see the upswing on interest rates. Well, we have seen uh, risk appetite increasing over the past week. Uh, we've seen money flowing back into our bond markets in particular, not into equities just yet. Do you think that uh, we're going to see the search for yield continue for this year? And what do you think is going to happen in June with, uh, when we have quantitative easing withdrawn from the US? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, uh, the you know what, the, the, the market has, uh, hasn't been consistent in its reaction to quantitative easing. I think there's been too many other, uh, to be many other uh, variables that's been read together with the quantitative easing at the times that we've seen it and the way that the market has reacted to it because it hasn't reacted in a consistent uh, pattern. And that is why I'm saying I don't know. It depends on with which ma mix of earthquakes, and, and uh, tsunamis and things like that, uh, it comes out uh, before we can really say what the market will do on that.